Hey y'all, really good to see you again here on Grassroots Garden. I'm Ryan and I am so excited to show you guys our fall garden uh, in this raised bed we did a few weeks ago. This thing has just gone nuts. It's all organic. Uh, it's just amazing. Let me show you guys how it's doing. So we'll start down here at this end and this is uh, our basil, basil from Proven Winters. And we did get just a, uh, a light frost. It was early this year for us. This Today's November 2nd. And uh, we got a frost about, I don't know, three weeks ago. And it burnt a little bit of, uh, of the new growth there. But that thing's still kicking real good. Cilantro's doing fantastic. And look at this daggum Carolina Reaper. This thing, it's got probably, I don't know, a dozen beautiful peppers on it. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them because they are, that's the hottest pepper in the world. So I'm not messing with that. But anyway, the plant itself is just so healthy and looks just amazing. And then we've got some potatoes that, uh, let's see what's on the bottom here. Let's see what's on the, on the hook. They kind of got left in here. Oh, it's a nice little baby red potato. It's not really time for them uh, this year. Plus, he's in a lot of shade. And so I'm just going to pull them out. But still just neat to see how well... They're still doing. There's got a little few baby shoots on there, and then our um, our lettuce here. If you remember, this they were all clumped together, and I tore them apart. And then we had one tea tiny baby one right here. Looks like we might have lost him, but the rest of them is doing good. Look at that. That's going to be delicious in a salad. And we, you know, I'm noticing we hardly have any bug damage. And that's, I think that's due to the garden's just so healthy right now. You know, they're able to really resist any type of bugs that may come along. But look at these collard greens. Man, that's making me hungry right there. Look how beautiful these leaves are. Just gorgeous. Now I'm going to come and add, if I don't knock it over first, I'm going to add some um, worm castings. This is from our buddies up at Earth and Organics. Uh, as you see, it's a certified South Carolina grown product and it's registered for organic use. And, you know, we're doing all organic, strictly organic on this entire raised bed. And just look at the results. I mean, they speak for themselves. They just look so healthy, so beautiful. And look at this kale. Let's try a piece. And the other great thing about uh, organic gardening is you can do this and you don't have to worry about chemicals that's not bad I gotta tell you kale's not my favorite but man when it's fresh like this and crisp and crunchy that's good so that's the benefit about organic gardening you know I was thinking the other day we've got a nitrogen plant close by the airport and I was riding by it and this thing's got ginormous smokestacks, smoke just billowing out the top. There's ponds all around it that they say are contaminated and got two-headed fish and all this other mess. And I was thinking, you know, we used to use a lot of man-made fertilizer back in the day, and we still do. I mean, you, you get, can't get around it. The nursery application, we have to use slow release in the, in the containers. Uh, unfortunately, you have, that's just what we have to do right now. Um, but I remember, you know, going in the garden with dad and helping him spread ammonium nitrate on the corn. And if your hand had a little bit of moisture on it, or sometimes even if it didn't, it would burn. I remember dad would say, well, run, wash it off real quick. That's the type of material that we're putting on food that we're going to eat, you know, and it just makes no sense when you can go an organic route. It's super easy. And you don't have to worry about all the chemicals and the junk that you're putting on your food and then putting in your body. It just makes me feel good knowing, you know, everything that we've used in here is all organic. And I'm not some huge tree hugger. Yes, I'm a plant nerd. Um, but, you know, going, I thought, used to think going organic, oh, you had to be some kind of hippie. But now, getting a little bit older, I realize the health benefits and just the, the benefit of the earth you know, in general. But anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. Our broccoli is looking 
really, really good. This is some of the prettiest broccoli I think I've ever grown. And these plants are only like, what, a month old from seed? I mean, that's just crazy. Our little purple sage, if you remember, we stuck him over there. He looks awesome. That kale's actually really good. It's, the taste is still in my mouth. It's so fresh. And then uh, this is our mustard greens. Look at that. Cool, frilly uh, margins on the leaf. Won't be much longer, and we'll be able to pick some of these greens. I'm going to probably mix the mustard and collards together and, and cook them, you know, jointly. And they kind of add, the mustards are a little more bitter than the collards, so it gives you just a little bit of, a little bit of snap in your meal. And then this is the ghost pepper. It's looking really good. Got a good many peppers hanging on it and got a lot of flowers, so it's going to continue producing. And our jalapeno, I, this is the one, one of the guys we had to move and he's looking okay. I mean, he's kind of struggling a little bit. Looks like Chip got broke. But he's got some fruit on him nonetheless. He's coming along. And let's see. We planted some seeds down here. This is going to be our radishes. And let me get y'all in there where you can really see. We've got them planted a little bit too close. The seeds are small, so I just kind of sprinkled them down a furrow. But what we need to do is come in here and cull the smaller ones because if not, they're going to compete for space down there and we won't get any large radishes like we want. So I'm just going to come in here and selectively thin them out. See, we don't want them growing that close together. So I'm going to get this guy right here and just try to pinch him. I just pull him on out like so and this guy as well and just move right on down the line y'all kind of get the idea I like to have at least like an inch in between the stems but these are just way too crowded so we're gonna go through and thin those out but look the other cool thing is uh is that you can eat let's get a little bit of that dirt off that's cool. I like radishes. They got that little pepper zing to them and the aftertaste. But it's just nice being able to pull it right out. And if you get a little bit of the dirt in your mouth, it's no big deal. It's not going to hurt you. It's all organic. And so our carrots are doing well. They also need to be thinned. So we'll just kind of, I'll come through here later on. I'll bore you guys y'all watching me but we're just gonna pick out the smaller ones and leave the uh, the bigger guys and again this is just because they're gonna compete down there for growing space it may cause them to grow deformed or just be you know too small got some more broccoli I stuck over here this thing is just really kicking butt y'all I'm really super proud of our little raised bed I bet you in about another week or two, you're not going to be able to see the dirt down there. I mean, this thing is going to get, it's going to get pretty massive. And that's when the, you know, you really can be proud of what you, what you've grown because it's just so healthy and doing so good. Then you can take this stuff right in the kitchen and prepare, prepare yourself a nice, fresh, organic meal. But then awesome. I'm really proud of that little garden, y'all. I'm, uh, Oh, I'm just really proud of it. So let's go walk around and uh, see what else is happening in the garden, especially right out here in this little area since we've been working on getting this porch area cleaned up and making it look pretty. Oh, there's looking back. That, isn't that wood pretty? I like um, the fact that we stained that. I think it just really sets it off and again kind of matches the, excuse me, kind of matches the porch. And our little uh, purple pixie. Lower Pedalum is doing like we told him and growing out over the brick. So, um, you know, that was this was the project we did when we planted on top of the ground, so to speak. So you can kind of see how I've just mulched all up under there to kind of help with erosion. And that's going to look really neat once he trails out. And then our uh, Asiatic Jasmine Vine is uh, doing his thing going across the steps there. That's our matching 
purple pixie on that side. I don't think I had these planted in the last video, but I did these little junipers, and we're gonna let them do the same thing. You know, run out on top of the uh, brick steps there. Our coffee cups, Calacasia. The frost got it too. It does have some new leaves coming out, and this is one of my favorite plants. I talk about it every time, but this is the one that collects the rainwater, tips it out, and stands back up. It dances in the rain. And we did a video on just on this one particular plant because it is on my top, probably top five uh, most favorite plants. But nonetheless, we'll come through here. We'll take our pruners just like so. And we'll just come in here and get rid of the burnt leaves. Pretty soon we'll get, um, you know, probably a pretty heavy duty frost here in another two to three weeks. And it's going to kill the whole thing. The whole entire plant is just going to melt and uh, turn into <laughs> compost. Got one on the other side that we need to clean up as well and talking about things that you know are gonna go dormant this banana this is a hardy banana and obviously it did not like the little frost that came through the other night so what i'm gonna do i'm probably just gonna leave a foot and just go ahead and chop him off i'll mulch uh, really heavily in this container I'm now I'm in the ground. I know he would come back for us next year. We're in zone 8A and I think they're hardy down to maybe 7B. Uh, but anyway, in this container, you know, obviously it's not in the ground and doesn't have that insulation. It's kind of up here on the deck and it's going to be exposed to more cold. So that may be a game changer for our banana. We're just going to have to kind of wait until next spring and find out on that one. All of our other little pots are doing good. Our lantana, Mexican heather, and our euphoria doing really good still, even though the frost did did come through. Mandevella's still kicking. Got some blooms coming out on it, but this is going to be short-lived again as soon as the cold comes. The sprinklers are running, and that's a bummer because I've got to get down here. I just remembered... I planted something down here that y'all got to see the flowers on. So I'm going to give it a minute and we're going to hop down here where we don't get wet. And let me show you the flowers on this really cool new plant. Okay, y'all. Well, Murphy's Law has got us once again. And the solenoid is stuck open and the sprinklers are still running. So I get to go fix that. But I'm going to show you guys these plants. I'm just going to show them to you very quickly because I don't want to get wet. Even though it's like 75 degrees out here and kind of warm. That water coming out of the pond behind me is cold and I'm not, uh, I don't like to be cold. So anyway, <laughs> here a real quick look at these flowers. So I'll go ahead and tell you, um, I do not have these for sale uh, at Grassroots. I purchased these from uh, a nursery called Plant Delights, which maybe after we show you the flowers would be a great time to show you uh, some footage of what I went to Plant Delights and met the owner, really cool guy, um, Tony Avent super nice guy they did some neat things with their nursery i think you'll like especially one thing they did with these concrete slabs i'll show you some footage here after we look at them but anyway i got them from plant delights nursery and i've planted them here so that i can grow them get them big and then i'll be able to take cuttings and then have them for sale on down the road so don't be mad at me they are really cool you're gonna want them but i don't have them go to plant delights nursery on the internet all right let's run Okay, so this is a butylon. Uh, some people call it Chinese lantern. But look at that cool flower. Isn't that awesome? And these are supposedly hardy. This one is going to be hot lava. And there's the sprinklers. Oh my God, that's so cold. I didn't see that one coming. All right, so there's one of them called hot lava. And then the other one, which has kind of gotten knocked down a little bit by the the sprinklers check this one out just a real nice really pretty orange and the name of that one before the sprinklers come is uh bartley schwartz so both of these are a butylon and uh real quick this is that salvia anthony parker 
that wasn't in bloom last time I showed you guys the, the porch. But she's blooming now. And look at that beautiful purple. And this salvia gets pretty big. That's a young one. It's probably going to maybe even double in size. I'm really loving this plant so far. I can't wait for it to get really big and, uh, and do its thing. But first, before we go spread a little fertilizer in our raised bed, let me show you that footage from Plant Delights Nursery. This is up near Raleigh. One of the coolest nurseries I've ever been to by far. Very special treat for you guys today. We are at Juniper Level Botanic Gardens up in Raleigh, North Carolina at Plant Delights Nursery. This place, we just got here, but it looks amazing. So we're gonna let you guys walk around with us, check it out. Let's go. Check it out. You can actually walk under this waterfall. That's so cool. It's actually cool too under here. It feels good. Amazing. that should not be grown in this area. All through uh, using all a recycled through, through product. Recycled. Yeah. I love it. That's wonderful. So you can, you, this, this is sort of a hot thing now. This, it's called crevice garden because you're creating rock cracks like exist in the uplift of the earth. They're completely Look here. fine. As long as you don't let it rain on them in the winter. How about that? Lithops outside. 
So that's what this crevice gives you the opportunity to do is these incredible things that you never thought were possible. Oh man. It's pretty neat for, for used concrete. Absolutely. I mean, why not take something, like you said, we're going to be in the landfill anyway, yeah. Yeah. reuse it and look what you've created. Yeah. And this is all the foundation of the house that we gave away. Oh, okay. This is all the big house logs. So we used every single bit from that yeah. house. Nothing went to the landfill. That's fantastic. Okay guys, we've got our worm castings here. I'm just gonna take handfuls and just kind of lightly sprinkle it over the whole surface of the entire raised bed. And then since I've got a little weeds popping up, I'm just gonna take this little hoe, a little trowel, and just kind of work the weeds. And that'll also incorporate the worm castings down into the soil a little bit better for us. And then these guys are going to really really jump and they're doing fantastic already but that's going to help them out tremendously so there you have it guys update on our raised bed it's doing fantastic all organic can't wait won't be long i'm going to show you guys how i cook collards and the mustard greens together and uh, we'll just keep learning together because the more you know the more you grow see y'all on the next video guys